Hey, what's up guys? So if you have a water heater that sounds like this, like it's making popcorn, then we probably want to get that addressed. I'll show you what I do to take care of mine. Let's just go over a quick list of the bare minimum uh, tools that you're going to need to complete this project. You're going to need a five in one tool or a paint scraper, a putty knife, anything like that that's metal. You're going to need channel locks, a flathead screwdriver, a piece of PEX. I'll get into how long you need and what size and all of that soon. You're going to need a half inch ratchet, a one and one sixteenth inch uh, socket. You're going to need a coupling, a reducer, some thread tape, citric acid or white distilled vinegar, either one's fine, and I have a two gallon uh, wet dry shop vac. You're also going to need a garden hose, a sacrificial hose, and you're gonna cut it right down the middle, just right in half, um, so that you'll have two lengths, uh, one with a female end, one with a male end. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna turn this off. There we go. Then I'm gonna turn off the gas valve. I'm going to turn off the cold water coming in. So the next step, what you're going to want to do is, since I have a gas heater, I'm going to remove this chute here, get this out of the way because I need to access the anode rod back here. And we're going to have to get that taken, taken out next. All right, with that chute gun, you're going to want to take a, uh, at least with mine, it's a one and one sixteenth inch uh, socket with a ratchet. Use a half inch ratchet. You want the beefiest one you can get. I recommend using a socket like this, so you can see the inside of it, versus one of these. This one will strip, especially if this is the first time you've ever done it and you've never taken this off. Uh, the calcium buildup and everything you have on this, this is going to be stuck big time. So you're also probably going to need a cheater pipe, so some um, steel pipe that goes on the end of this to gives you more leverage so your arm will be out here more. Um, and um, if it's never been taken out, there's a good chance that this is just going to twist. The entire tank is going to twist while you're trying to do it, and you're not going to get any or enough torque on this to break the bond. What I had to do, you can kind of see the marks here, I had to put a ratchet strap all the way around under this, obviously, between here. Uh, but a ratchet strap, I put a foam, like stadium cushion here, and then one on the back. And I cinched this down with the ratchet lock right here as tight as I could. I then ran a flat board against this wall. And then I took another board, like a two by four piece that ran against um, this flat board against the wall over to the ratchet um, locking mechanism here. Um, and I got that really tight in there so that it was not moving on its own. That way, when I pulled on this and tried to go um, counterclockwise, trying to twist the whole thing this way, this tank couldn't spin because of the board that was pushing up against the wall. That's what I ultimately had to do. And I had a cheater pipe all the way standing out here, my arm out here, in order to break this for the first time. I now do this process yearly, uh, so it's not that big of a deal, but that was my horror story. Let's get on to the next step of removing the anode rod. All right, that was relatively easy since I do this once a year. Um, you're also gonna wanna open up a hot water line like at your sink or whatnot and that'll help with some of the pressure here because once you start cracking this, water starts um, going out. And from here, if you have calcium carbonate, like I do, this anode rod is supposed to be sacrificial and it's supposed to get eaten away, um, but I've had this same rod for a long time because the calcium carbonate just sticks to it and the rod doesn't actually t deteriorate. And I have a collapsible one, which if you have limited space, you don't want like a four foot rod in here because you can't get it out and you can't tip the tank over. So do yourself a favor, get a collapsible one. Pull this out. Look at all that calcium carbonate. All of that. That's all sitting on the bottom of your tank. And we gotta get that taken care of. All right, let's get to the next step. Now we need to go to the spigot at the bottom and see if we have any water flow. If you have a lot of calcium buildup, there's a good chance this water's not going to flow out very easily at all. You might get just a trickle. Hopefully I'll luck out here. Because we need to drain the tank. And that's good enough for me, so what I'm going to do is turn this off here. And I'm going to hook up a hose 
and I'm gonna drain this out onto my driveway. Now, if you find that yours is not uh, draining water out, you basically got two choices. The first one is to take a piece of wire and to just back feed it inside of here. So obviously open this up uh, with a screwdriver or whatever tool you need on yours to open the spigot. Run a wire, like a stiff wire that can bend a little bit up through there to break up the calcium that's blocking it from the water from getting out. Other than that, if it keeps consistently getting blocked by silt or small calcium chunks, you can also tediously drain this into a small bucket and have a um, short piece of hose, um, you know, a foot long or whatnot, just have the um, female end here attached and you can blow back into the hose uh, with your mouth and blow the, the calcium out and then water will flow for a while and it might plug back up and you can keep doing that process. But those are um, two ways of getting around that. I have the hose hooked up now, it is draining outside. And as you can see here outside, we are getting a ring of calcium building up. Now while that's draining, let's talk about this anode rod really quick. Like I said, I recommend a, a, one of these collapsible ones. They're just easier all around. Um, these are supposed to deteriorate instead of the lining of the tank, I believe. And um, if you have calcium carbonate in your water, you're not going to have any deterioration. It's just going to coat the rod itself. So I just take a uh, one of those like 5-in-1 scraper tools scrape all the calcium off of this and it'll reveal the magnesium underneath. Okay, now that all of the water is drained out, I had tilted the water heater towards myself to allow any remaining water to drain. What I'm going to do is take a pipe wrench and I'm going to um, break the seal with the tank here. And I'm going to leave the uh, hose on because I want to protect the threads. Because I've ruined this one time by having the hose off and this slipped. And the steel of this is harder than the brass of this, and it will ruin the threads, so you don't want to do that. So leave this on just till you crack it. Once you do, you can take the hose off and unthread it the rest of the way. And if you listen closely, you can hear a little tick, tick, tick. That's actually, even though my cold water valve is turned off, it has a leak. I don't know if that's because of the calcium buildup as well, but never trust that when this is off that this the water is going to be completely... Um, stop from going inside of the tank. The first time I tried cleaning this, what I did was I drained um, almost all the water and I filled this thing with about 10 gallons of vinegar and I went on vacation for 10 days. I left the anode rod out and uh, I expected to come back and have everything dissolved. That tick, 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 that filled up over 10 days and I came back home to a flooded basement because everything that overflowed went right down in here. Alright, the next step, once that is um, completely drained out, go ahead and close the spigot again. You can leave the hose connected for now, and then we're going to add some sort of an acid. Um, I recommend citric acid, but you can use vinegar as well. Uh, pour a couple gallons of vinegar inside. Um, use a funnel to make sure you don't splash vinegar everywhere. Or you can add some of this. Uh, the latest concoction I've been doing is basically like um, two gallons of water and, you know, six cups of this or something. It... it turns into like a carbonated mess inside, which is great. The carbon dioxide just shows that it's reacting. Um, and then I let it sit for about eight hours. So I try to do all of this in the morning and then go to work and then come back. Basically, all it's going to do is soften some stuff up, um, loosen it a little bit, make it a little more brittle, the calcium inside. But it's by no means going to dissolve all of your calcium. So don't get that idea. You're going to have to leave this for days to accomplish that task. All right. Now, after the eight hours has gone by, um, I don't like to put too much in because I don't want to empty a lot of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it out through the spigot and uh, just fill a bucket and dump that in the drain. With the spigot removed, you can now see that all of this is calcium. It's like calcium chips everywhere. And that's what's causing all of that popping sound. So the steam bubbles are trying to get up and when they have, that, they build up pressure when they're under there and when they're finally released, they make that popping noise. So we have to get all of that crud out and we're going to start with the vacuum. Now I have a two gallon wet dry shop vac and uh, what I did is I took the hose with me to Home Depot and I tried finding some sort of um, attachment that I could make to be able to vacuum the inside of the water heater and what I ended up finding was this uh, coupling here and this fits perfectly inside there. I mean it is tight perfectly inside the hose of the vacuum and then this reducer here which uh, drops it down to a half inch put that in the end 
And um, that works perfect with this uh, PEX water line here. And uh, that is a perfect fit that goes right in there. So I basically got a reduced vacuum hose with the end of this. The PEX, I end up bending it, kinking it lightly in certain areas to give it this curve. And what that allows me to do once, um, once I have the spigot out is I can then feed this inside of the water tank and kind of drop down into the edges where I want to get. The bottom of my tank, I'm assuming it might be the same with yours, is dome shaped. So it's like this and all of the sediment will fill around the perimeter. So you need something that gets around and sucks around the edges. Uh, if you hear your vacuum change pitch, that means that this is blocked and you're going to have to clear this out. So it's going to be one of those tedious processes where you put it in there, you get as much as you can, and then you clear out the little uh, PEX tubing and you just keep going. Once you've got about as much as you think you can get, what I then do is I take the other half of that hose that we cut that we didn't talk about. Um, so the end that we had on here is the uh, female end that attaches. We take the male end, now that the spigot is out, and we put the male end in here. And on mine, it can only twist in like an eighth of a turn or whatnot, but that's enough to get it to hold and stay. We then take the end that was on here, and we go out to our um, spigot outside for like our garden. We attach that up. We run the line from the spigot outside back through the top where the anode rod was. So it'll feed down in that hole. And then we um, turn on the hose outside and the, uh, on full blast. And then from up top, we just swirl the hose around the best we can to spray the edges um, the best that we can. And what that's gonna do is just agitate all of that calcium and it's going to flow out the hose that we have connected here. And we don't wanna have the spigot here because this only lets a small amount of water through. We want uh, you're going to have calcium chunks and whatnot, so you're going to want the, whole, the uh, whole hose so that as much calcium can get through as possible and not get restricted by this. So all of that calcium that's getting agitated by the water up top, splashing down, is going to flow out um, outside, and you're going to be able to see calcium just piling up outside wherever you're draining it. You will do this process for as long as you keep seeing calcium flow out. So keep going outside repeatedly, take note of what the calcium pile looks like, Take a look at the chunks of calcium that are going out. If you keep agitating the water and you notice that nothing new is coming out, that pile is not growing anymore, that means that water is still getting out, but you're, you've got some serious blockage here and nothing's being allowed out, basically. So what you're going to have to do is turn off the garden hose outside, come back inside, let it all drain. When it's done draining outside from the water that you've added and agitated with, you then repeat the process. You remove um, the hose. And then you take your shop vac, you vacuum up whatever calcium chunks are blocking it, you clear the blockage in the hose. Um, usually there's not much, it's just right at the very end. And then you do the same thing with the PEX tubing. You put it back in, vacuum out as much as you can, and uh, when you're happy with how much you got out, you repeat the process. You connect the hose back up, you turn the water on outside, you agitate as much as you can and get as much calcium out. You just lather, rinse, and repeat. It's that simple, guys. I do this about once every six months because I refuse to get a um, water softener. It's, I just am too lazy to put it in right now, but I do it basically first thing after the snow melts and then I do it right before winter as well. So about once every six months, not a big deal. Um, you can skip if you want the vinegar or citric acid process if you want and just get right to the vacuuming. That's completely up to you. Uh, it might be all in my head that it actually softens things up, but that's just the procedure I've been doing this whole time. All right, and as you guys can see, this is the results from yesterday's cleaning. This is the stuff that had flooded out. Um, there was even more over here at one point. Uh, we had a good rainstorm that washed a lot of stuff away. But you can see the calcium chunks and chips that are down here. Um, the longer the calcium stays there, I think it turns this yellow. and just It's hard, but you can break it, or it's just this white powdery substance. And then the shop vac itself filled this up quite a bit. I mean, this is all all thick calcium that was at the bottom of the uh, water heater. Now why it causes the, the uh, popping sound, I believe, it's just like when you boil a pot of water, you get the bubbles that start at those little points at the bottom of the pot, and they try to rise up. Well, when you've got pounds and pounds of this heavy, thick calcium just weighing on top of it, you increase the pressures, 
and I think uh, it's the bubbles basically just releasing and, and able to escape and get out. It causes that popping sound. And they're breaking up the chunks of calcium and things like that. So anyways, I hope this video helps you out, guys. And uh, if you got that popping sound, it's not that big of a chore. If you skip the uh, vinegar step, um, you can get this done in just a couple hours and be done with it. Uh, I did about, uh, I'd say, five or six passes uh, with vacuuming on mine. And that's how much calcium I was able to get out of it and um, all of that flushed out as well. So um, if this uh, helped you out, feel free to give me a like and a subscribe, and I appreciate your view. Take it easy, guys.